So as every one of you wanted that I should make another MCQ discussion video and in this video I am going to only talk about how to approach image based questions for be it NEET PG, INISET, FMG or UPSC. So I am Dr. Mayu Khajra. I got AI 29 in NEET PG 2023 and currently doing my dermatology residency. Directly coming steps to approach an image based questions. First thing is that you should read the question stem properly and you shouldn't jump to the image and make a diagnosis because there are many important clues in the images and in the question stem. So at first read the question stems. Many times diagnosis could be made even without looking the image also. Means from the question stem only the diagnosis is evident and I would show this by solving nine MCQs. Okay. Um, live demonstration of solving MCQs. Look into the image for marking and being double sure. You should also look at the image that what I am thinking it is right or not and then only mark because in haste if you mark seeing the question stem also and you get a negative marks then it is going to shift your rank massively don't miss on any options you should you should read all the options and you should try to rule out options also if you are not getting an answer directly and this video is made for a purpose or else i wouldn't have made this video so stay till the very end i would reveal the purpose also now image based pyq solving all are need pg questions only only one question is of aims that is our first question a man arrives to opd history of falling this is not that much important he is hypertensive okay hypertensive history of atrial fibrillation and is currently on medications of captopril atenonol aspirin and amiodarone he has the following finding. Let's see the finding and what is the most probable diagnosis. So there is some pigmentation on the center part of the face and also on the malar regions also near the mandible. So let's see the options. Captopril toxicity. I don't think so any pigmentation occurs. Silver toxicity if it happens as we know silver is black in color. Okay black. So silver toxicity is unlikely and lupus pernio no history is given of lupus pernio and lupus pernio is specifically in the malar nose malar in this region only not that much extensive and the patient is taking amiodarone and it causes pigmentation so the answer is amiodarone induced skin lesions coming to the next question an antibiotic was prescribed who had fever and sore throat two days later he developed rash which of the following substance could have caused this? So we can see a morbiliform rash. And uh, after two days only it is happening. So most likely it is a drug reaction only. And all the options are also drugs. So most commonly it is caused by beta lactams. As we know, drug reaction is most commonly caused by beta lactams. That is the hypersensitive drug reaction, morbiliform rash is a hypersensitivity only so answer would be amoxicillin if you want to rule out options there is no other antibiotic only okay these are not antibiotics prednisolone is given in the treatment of this and these are not antibiotics so antibiotics most commonly cause the drug rash um, most commonly beta lactams sulfonamides do cause some of the drug reaction but they in the option you can see only amoxicillin is there so you can do this question by ruling out options also now recognize the image given below we can see a trauma in the head and there is a bit of incised looking lesion but it is a bit curved so it would be among the incised only whether it is so lacerated is ruled out it is not looking like a laceration with irregular margins so will it be incised wound or incised looking laceration so see this is on the skull so over bone if you apply uh, blunt force then the skin splits only from the 
knowledge of FMT we know. So this is a case of incised looking laceration. And these all are very important questions. And these all are neat PG questions. Only one was AIMS. Rest all are previous year neat PG questions only. So there is a chance that these questions are also getting repeated. And if you are new to my channel and liking this video, then hit the MCQ of the subscribe button also, okay? Because that option is never gonna be wrong option. Number four is diagnose the case. So we can see in the MRI here is a calcification. This is the pituitary region. So oligodendroglioma and meningoma is ruled out. Now it could be pituitary adenoma or it could be craniopharyngioma. But in craniopharyngioma only we can see calcification. So this is calcification only. What does the ETCO2 curve depict? So these are curer clefts. Where it is seen? In it is seen in if uh, muscle relaxant is decreased and it means we should administer muscle relaxant. Let's see the options. So spontaneous efforts, bronchospasm, we can see shark fin like it is CO2. I may be wrong because I have given my exam more than one year and three months ago. So I may be wrong. If there I am wrong, then please consider. Esophageal intubation. So in esophagus, there is not much of carbon dioxide. The patient won't expire any carbon dioxide only. So it would be like this a flat line and accidental extubation also flat line because capnograph is measuring CO2. So by ruling out options also, you can mark spontaneous efforts. But uh, as I said that the muscle relaxant is reduced, that means only that the spontaneous respiration is resuming. Okay. So you can mark it by ruling out options also or by direct answering. Now, this is a very tricky question. Face neck of a patient from Bihar, Bihar endemic for Kalazar, who has history of persistent fever in a youngster by nodular hypopigmented lesions. Now, hypopigmented lesions could be due to LL Hansen. PKDL that is post Kalazar dermal leishmaniasis. It could be due to Pitriasis alba and it could be due to vitiligo. So hypopigmented lesions, if we see the options only, so there is no other option uh, which is causing hypopigmented, multiple hypopigmented lesions. So it is PKDL. Now let's decipher the question. Nodular hypopigmented lesion and C. Both hypoesthesia and nerve thickening is absent. In LL Hansen, there could be normal anesthesia, but there would be specifically nerve thickening. So nerve thickening is absent. This is the tagline of the question and it makes the diagnosis of PKDL. Even if there was uh, the option was not tuberculoid leprosy, but the option was LL Hansen, LL leprosy, then also PKDL would have been the answer because of the taglines Bihar. Don't take it otherwise. <laughs> Hypopigmented lesion and no, no nerve thickening is present. So by this only you can come to the diagnosis. A leprosy patient who is multibacillary receiving multiple medication therapies exhibit significant rashes on the lesions that are already present. So this is a case of type 1 reaction. Type 1 reaction that is type 4 hypersensitivity. So I don't need to look at the image also because by looking at the image you can't understand. The thing that significant rashes on already persisting lesions means it is type 1 and if there was erythema nodosum leprosum it would have been type 2. So what you should do? We know the rule in case of leprosy is that you can't stop the drug. So it would be stop would be ruled out either continue 
एंटी लेप्रोसी थेरेपी स्टार्ट स्टेरॉयड और स्टार्ट थेलिडोमाइड सो फर्स्ट लाइन इज स्टेरॉयड एज यू ऑल नो एंड थेलिडोमाइड इज द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस बट बिलीव मी इट इज वेरी मच कॉस्टली एंड हैज अ लॉट ऑफ साइड इफेक्ट्स लाइक वन टैबलेट ऑफ थेलिडोमाइड कॉस्ट फिफ्टी रुपीज अप्रॉक्सीमेटली एंड इट हैज साइड इफेक्ट्स लाइक माइलो सप्रेशन मेनी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड साइड इफेक्ट्स वेरी मच सीडेटिंग ऑल्सो so we go go for us low cost option that is the steroids only and lesser side effects steroid do has side effects but you can taper it off only in cases of resistant cases if the question mentioned that it is not resolving on steroids for 3 to 6 months then you can switch to thalidomide if the question says that it is not resolving on steroid of 20 mg then your first option would be to increase the dose of steroid on increasing the dose of steroid that is if on 1 mg per kg body weight also it is not resolving then you should go and switch to thalidomide okay a 8 26 year old woman was seen with a history of dysphonia dysphagia impaired vision growing limb weakness what is it pointing out guys this is pointing out to myasthenia gravis where you see one sided diplopia as the day progresses so you would have impaired vision uh, as the day progresses there would be limb weakening also and this is a bit severe so having dysphonia and dysphagia also so in myasthenia gravis a uh, chest x ray is given what is seen in myasthenia gravis in chest x ray thymoma is present so this also Uh, you can make the diagnosis by looking at the question stem only see you can make the diagnosis looking at the question stem but i am seeing the image to be double confirm that this is showing that only see in this area this is the thymus gland so it is like a cell so this is a case of thymoma in myasthenia gravis okay paravertebral axis abscess so it is not showing the area only so it won't be there t cell lymphoma in t cell lymphoma it is like this huge calcified tuberculoma uh, you can't make the diagnosis just by looking at the x ray history if it is given then you can make the diagnosis or else a radiologist could make after 3 months the patient's upper limb was still swollen from the mastectomy of ca breast so after mastectomy of ca breast there is limb swelling for 3 months what is the diagnosis you can see the limb swelling now wound infection how can a wound infection be present in the limbs where the cut is on the breast in this region okay so wound infection not seroma also localized so this is also not so upper limb lymphangiosarcoma this is called stewart trips syndrome and upper limb lymphedema but mind it it takes about 5 to 10 years to develop because the chronic lymphedema causing the cellular changes and it is leading to a angiosarcoma so it is a case of angiosarcoma so as you know that cancer takes time to uh, develop so this won't be the option this is only 3 months history that why the question reading is important and the clinical image is also a bit different so if you don't know the image also you can see by the question stem only you can rule out the option and it would be upper limb lymphedema now the purpose of making a video uh was i want you all that you all know the tragic incident of vyanad if you don't know also uh, so it is a really tragic incident i won't tell the film because it would be shocking just before the exam so i would request you all if it is possible to please donate some amount of uh, money you are having for the unfortunate ones who have lost their houses and their living i would also try to donate some of the amount uh, that is feasible for me so if possible please donate for vyanad it is a, a natural calamity on india and people need our help 
so coming to the question of the day that is the 10th question and i am giving it to you guys so that you solve and tell the correct answer below and i will try to give heart reacts to every comment that is given correct answer so you can see the figure okay this following and this finding could be seen in which of the following viral infection and your options are chikungunya dengue covid 19 infection or it could be seen in all of the following so another video is popping up if you have time so go watch the video and go watch my most viewed video on how to mark correct answers by ruling out options so all the best and may you get what you deserve